Hi there everyone, it's Andrew Murray here from Generation Builders Ministries. I want to welcome you to, uh, to Generation Builders TV this evening. I uh, want to welcome you whether you're watching live on Facebook or you're watching on Catch Up or you're watching on YouTube. It is great to have you with us. In a few moments time I'm going to bring the word of God to us and I've got a powerful word that I know is going to be a real blessing to you um, this evening. Just while we're waiting for some more people to join us, I want to encourage you to visit our website. Go to generationbuilders.org. We've got online courses up there. We've got an online store which is adding new products and new resources all the time. So do check that out. If you're not on our mailing list, I encourage you to, to again, visit our website. And there is a sign up uh, section there where you can put in your name and your email address. We'll add you to our database. and. We will let you know from time to time about these broadcasts, about different events and missions that we've got coming up. If you feel led to support us financially in this time, then again, it's there on the website. You can go to the donate button and you can give a one-off donation or you can partner with us on a monthly basis. And all the finances that comes into our ministry, it helps us do what we do in terms of doing these broadcasts and also physically as well, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. I've got some books that are available on Amazon. You can check them out on Amazon stores worldwide, Seeing the Church, The Miracle Table, and The Sound of Heaven. They are all available on Amazon stores worldwide in paperback and on Kindle as well. Do check out our YouTube channel. Some of you may be watching this on YouTube right now, but uh, do check out our YouTube channel. All these videos that we put on Facebook Live, 
they're also uploaded onto YouTube as well. So you can check those out and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. And for those that are watching live tonight, I would love to have some interaction with you. So do leave us some comments in the comments section. Do share the video, like it, all that kind of stuff. What I want to do tonight is I want to share with you a message that I preached um, a few months ago from our home church, Revive Church here in Hull. And this is a message on um, looking at the power of praise and looking at, the, many of you will know that the, uh, the, the name Judah in the Bible, it means praise the Lord um, in Hebrew. And so I, I delivered this message on the tribe of Judah, on the power of praise. And I believe this is really going to be a real blessing and encouragement to you tonight. So here he goes. This morning, I want to preach to you um, just for a little bit. I, I asked Darren if it was okay if I could get up a little bit early. That's not because I want to preach for longer. Um, but I want to give uh, more time this morning uh, just to praise and worship after I preach. Because um, I want to preach to us this morning about praise. And so uh, we got a little graphic up. If you follow Laura on social media, um, you will have noticed that for the past four years, all of her posts, she's put this little hashtag uh, when we talk, when she puts up pictures of our firstborn, I am Judah. And so I want to talk to us this morning about the tribe of Judah, which of course means praise and the power that there is in praise. And um, this, uh, this is uh, really a remarkable thing. I've never had this happen before. Uh, but last week we were in Ireland and I was just in the lobby of the, of the hotel that we were staying in. And I was getting ready to go to church and I, I got this message I was going to preach. And suddenly the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about the tribe of Judah. And so I got my notebook out, my Bible out, and I, I was just quickly uh, kind of filling in these notes to go and preach. And um, I got there, and, and Emily had been preaching that morning at a different campus. And so I went up to Emily. I said, hey, what, what, what were you preaching on this morning? And she said, God gave me this word about the tribe of Judah. Um, so I was like, okay, that's interesting. Well, what scriptures did you use? And she told me the scriptures, and I looked at my scriptures, and they were exactly the same. So I said, well, what kind of revelations, what thoughts were you kind of bringing out? And she showed me her notes, and it was pretty much word for word uh, what I was going to preach on. Um, and so I was like, wow, I've never had that before, that two speakers could preach pretty much exactly. We could have swapped notes, and it would have been pretty much the same message. So I really feel that where the church is at right now, that this is a, a real um, word in season. It's only a simple message, uh, but I, I just believe that God wants to just take us in praise to another level this morning. Amen? So um, the, the birth of Judah, you read about it in Genesis chapter 29. And it's a real fascinating family dynamic because Jacob has ended up with two wives, Rachel and Leah. And the Bible tells us that Rachel was loved by Jacob. Rachel was the one that was beautiful. Rachel was the one that Jacob loved. He was head over heels in love with her. Jacob was, uh, had worked 14 years to marry Rachel. And yet the Bible says that it seemed like just a, a matter of days because he loved her so much. But then there's the other woman in this dynamic, Leah. Can you imagine for a moment how it would have felt to be Leah? That you're in this marriage with three people, the other wife is loved, and you aren't. Leah is the one that is bypassed. Leah is the one that Jacob doesn't care about. Leah is the one that was a mistake. You remember Jacob woke up the day after his wedding expecting that Rachel will be there, and Leah's there. It's a mistake. Leah is a disappointment. Leah is unloved. Leah is overlooked. Maybe she, I'm sure she was lonely. I'm sure she was jealous. Maybe even bitterness was kind of knocking at the door of her heart. And so Leah decides to start having children. 
and you read in Genesis 29 that that she has a foot, that she becomes pregnant and she gives birth to a son and it says she named him Reuben for she said it is because the Lord has seen my misery <laughs> you can tell that she's really happy about this right and then she says this surely my husband will love me now you see there's a lie that this world believes and because we live in this world it's a lie that we can sometimes fall into as well and the lie is this that my value comes out of what I can produce Leah thought if I can just produce a kid then surely my husband will love me don't we live in a world that places our value on what we can produce. If I've got a good job, if I've got a good house, if I've got money in the bank, if I can drive a nice car, if I can go on a nice holiday, then I'm valuable. My life is worth something. I work hard, I produce something, and that is what I base my value on. Who knows that sometimes if we're not careful, that attitude can also creep into our church life as well. What is my role? What's my position? What's my title? How many times am I on the rota? And if we're not careful, it can also creep into our relationship with God. What can I do to get God's approval? Darren was speaking so well about this just a few moments ago. If I can pray enough, if I can read the Bible enough, if I can be holy enough, if I can worship passionately enough, then maybe I can somehow get the approval of God. But who knows, if you base your approval and your value on what you do, it, what you can produce, it's never going to be enough. And Leah found that she had a child, she had Reuben, but it still wasn't enough to get Jacob to love her. So do you know what she did? She had another kid. She just thought, if I just keep popping kids out, then surely my husband will love me. If I can just do more, if I can just produce more, then surely I will earn the love and the affection of my husband. So she has a second child called Simeon. And his name means God hears. Reuben means God sees. Simeon means God hears. Do you ever feel like no one is listening? Do you ever feel like no matter how much I do, no matter how much I strive, no matter how I display my gifts and my talents and my abilities, I'm still not getting people's attention. People still aren't listening to me. And sometimes even with God, do you ever feel like God's not listening? Do you ever feel like you're doing stuff for God and still God isn't listening? Still you've not got that breakthrough. Still you've not got that answer. No one understands. No one hears. And so what does she do? She does more. She has another child. And this time, this one she names Levi. And she says this, now at last my husband will become attached to me. Do you see that she's in this cycle, this pattern, desperately trying to get Jacob to love her. Now she has a third child, Levi, which means attached. She's gone from wanting Jacob to love her. Now she's just, well, at least we can just be attached. At least he'll actually pay some kind of attention to me. But it still didn't work. Do you know when we base our value on what we produce? Who knows? There's always going to be someone who's got more. There's always going to be someone that's got a bigger house. There's always going to be someone that's got a bigger car. When it comes to our relationship with God, you see, the law 
always puts that demand on us that you've got to do more. And who knows, the law produces death. Even the, the religious people of Jesus' day, they got hundreds of Old Testament laws and they tried their best. The Pharisees fulfilled them all and they still didn't feel like they were accepted by God. So do you know what they did? They created a whole bunch of other laws and still it wasn't enough. If you live your life trying to earn God's approval, trying to earn God's acceptance by what you do, it will kill the joy out of you. It will kill the freedom out of you. And if you live your church life based on the approval of men and how you are used and how you are noticed, then it will drive you crazy. And Leah comes to this place, she's having child after child after child, and still she's overlooked. Still, not only is she not being loved, but she's not, her husband's not even attached to her. But then she has a fourth child. And I want you to see this. It says that she conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time. Everyone say this time. This time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Which means praise. Do you see that something changed in her mentality? This time, I've tried producing children. I've tried doing all I can do. And still my husband won't love me. So now, I'm going to change my focus. Now I'm going to change the, the direction of my heart. Now, I'm going to praise God. I'm no longer living for the approval of men. I'm no longer living for the approval of my husband. I'm no longer basing my value on how many kids I can produce, on what I can do, on what I can produce. Now I am going to turn my attention on God. Now I am going to praise him. Now I am going to, I'm going to name this child Judah. I'm going to praise the Lord because now... I'm, I'm, my focus, my attention is all going to be, I'm taking my eyes off of myself and I'm putting it, I'm fixing it on praising God. And then there's just this, this little throwaway line, it says this, and Leah stopped having children. It was like something ended. This cycle that she was in of constantly trying to earn the approval of others. This cycle she was in of constantly wondering, am I good enough? This cycle of looking at Rachel and, and, and there being comparison there and Leah always feeling like the, the lesser. Suddenly when the moment she started to praise God, it ended. The cycle ended, the frustration ended, the pain and the hurt and the loneliness ended. And she realized my value is not based on what men think of me or what people think of me or, or how people treat me or whether I'm being used. I don't even care about that anymore. I am here to praise God. And, and sometimes, it, you know, in church, we're, particularly in a prophetic church, we love to talk about new beginnings and new seasons and it's a new day and a new song. But sometimes in our life, there are things that just need to finish. But sometimes in our lives, there are these patterns and the, the, we're going around in circles and we're constantly cycles of comparison and jealousy and insecurity and unworthiness and feeling unloved and not good enough. And sometimes God just needs to kill that. And praise is a thing that does it. When we take our eyes off of ourselves, and it doesn't matter anymore what other people think of me. It doesn't matter whether I'm on the road or it doesn't matter what title I've got. It doesn't matter what doors have opened or not opened. I am here to praise God. Something ends, something breaks in our lives when we come to that place. Judah, the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah is so central in, in Scripture. The Bible says that when the children of Israel marched out, God said, Judah must go first. That wasn't a nice idea. 
That wasn't Moses' idea. That wasn't just because they were placed best to get out and cause less traffic. It was God's idea. It was God's order that Judah has to be first. And it's the order of, that God wants in our lives that praise should always be first. That praise should always be my default position. I wonder if when we find bad news, when we run into difficulty, sometimes praise can be like the fifth thing on the list. You know, number one, I've got to put it on Facebook. You know, number two, I've got to, you know, tell everyone. Number three, I've got to worry about it. Number four, I've got to stress and not sleep for a week. And then finally, I might get around to praising God. But God says Judah's got to be first. My, the first thing I do is praise God. My, my default position is not worry. It's not fear. It's not anxiety. It's not even turning to people, even godly people. My first choice has got to be to praise God. When we praise God, when our default position is to praise God, we position ourselves for God's breakthrough power. Bible says famously in, in Psalm at 76, that we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter his courts with praise. The courts of God, the presence of God. Praise is the, is the landway, it's the runway that gets us into the presence of God. Do you want to know how to get into God's presence? Praise him. Do you ever feel far away from God? What's the answer? Praise Him. The, the, when you begin to praise God, you step into His courts. And who knows, in His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence is healing. In His presence is freedom. In His presence is peace. There's security, there's strength, there's grace. Everything we need is in His presence. And praise takes us there. Sometimes people will come up to me and say, can you help me? I feel far away from God. And I don't know what they're expecting me to say, but usually my answer is this, praise him. So I don't know about you, if I feel far away from God, I just praise him and I step right into his presence. If I feel I'm not hearing from God, if I feel that my prayer life is a little bit dry, I lift up my voice and I start to praise him. And suddenly I'm right there in the courts of God. Says in Psalm, also says in Psalm 76 that God is known in Judah. And I love that, that God is known in praise. Do you want to know him? You will never know him without first learning how to praise him. I found that the ones that know how to worship him, the ones that know how to praise him, the, the ones that know how to give him thanks, the ones that have praise as number one, they are the ones that have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit that those that just don't get the whole praise thing don't have. Friends, God is known. God is found in praise. God inhabits, I think James quoted this in our prayer meeting before the service, God inhabits the praises of his people. Isn't that powerful? God inhabits the praises of his people. You see, when we talk about the presence of God, let's get the theology out of the way for a moment. Who knows God is omnipresent? There are three different levels to the presence of God. There is God's omnipresence. God is everywhere all the time. Yep. But then there is God's indwelling presence. And that's the, the truth that God dwells in his temple, in his children. That's a deeper level, right? But then there's another level, a deeper level, which is what we might call the manifest presence of God. The glory of God. When God just turns up. And the Bible says that God turns up where there's praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. I don't know if you've ever been around to someone's house. And after about five, ten minutes, you've, you've just thought, the atmosphere is really awkward here. I've got to leave. 
and, and, and you try and get out there as quickly as you can. But then have you ever been somewhere and you've just thought, I could stay here all night. I'm comfortable in this atmosphere. The manifest presence of God is comfortable in the atmosphere of praise. Where there's groaning and mumbling and complaining and doubt and unbelief, God's like, I can't rest here. But when there's praise, God moves in. God inhabits the praises of his people. I think it's the King James version of that verse. I think the NIV says God inhabits the praises of his people. I think it's the King James that says um, he's enthroned in the praises of his people. And there's this wonderful uh, kind of implication there that where there is praise, God's kingdom comes. God's power comes. The, that's where miracles take place. That's where the glory takes place. Uh, you know, I've been in meetings where without anyone laying hands on anyone, just during the praise, people have been healed. Back pain has gone Lumps have, have dissolved in people's bodies just in the atmosphere of praise. Because where there is praise, there the kingdom is. In, in Psalm 1-8, there's this, uh, there's this uh, kind of wonderful verse where God lists some of the tribes of Israel. And he says, he says Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet. Then he says this, but Judah is my scepter. He names all the tribes. He said, this one is mine. This one belongs to me. But when it comes to Judah, when it comes to praise, he said, this one is where my scepter is. This is where I rule. This is where I reign from. This is where my power and my authority is. Who needs the kingdom of God to break into their life this morning? Who needs the kingdom of God to break into their circumstances? Who needs the authority of heaven to be released? Friends, the answer is praise. When you step into that realm of praise, the kingdom comes, the power comes, the glory comes. Um, in Genesis uh, 38, you read about the children that Judah had to Tamar. He had two children. And I think this is powerful because it shows us what praise produces. What is the fruit of praise? first child that he had, Zera, it means brightness. So praise produces brightness. We've all had the situation before. We've gone into a room. It's pitch black. You turn on the light switch. The light comes on. And in that moment, everything changes. Amen? The darkness disappears because the light has changed the atmosphere. And when you begin to praise, the brightness of God's presence shines. And in that moment, everything changes. Praise has the power to change the atmosphere. You know, we've got a picture of a lion there, the Lion of Judah. And it's interesting that in the wild... Don't know, we might see some lions in Ghana next week, I don't know. But sometimes we think that when a lion roars, it'll kind of lift its head up to the sky and roar into the sky. But actually in, in, the, in the, the, the plains of Africa, that is not how a lion will roar. When a lion roars, it puts its head down. And when it roars, the uh, vibrations of its roar will go into the earth and it can carry for miles. You see, your praise goes further than you realize. When you begin to praise God, you, we're not just singing words. We're not just, si we're not just making noise in a, in a room, in a school hall, in hall this morning. Our praise is going up to the heavens. Our praise is defeating principalities and powers. Our praise is moving the hand of God. Our praise is changing the atmosphere over our city. Our, our praise in our various campuses this morning, our praise is changing a region. In my life when I praise, that praise, it carries 
into my finances. It carries into my family. It carries into my home. It carries into my ministry. When I begin to praise God, the effect of that praise carries. There's a brightness that comes. Uh, Second uh, Samuel says, out of the brightness of his presence, bolts of lightning blaze forth. Isaiah 60 says, nations will come to your light, kings to the brightness of your dawn. There's this idea that favor and blessing and prosperity, it's all there in the brightness of God. The brightness of God attracts all these things and the brightness is the fruit of praise. The second child that Judah had, and I actually spoke on this a few months ago, Perez. His name means breakthrough. And I love that praise produces breakthrough. That breakthrough is the fruit of my praise. Does anyone need a breakthrough this morning? Your breakthrough is on the other side of your praise. If I can see your praise... I know that breakthrough is coming. Who needs a breakthrough in their health this morning? Who needs a breakthrough in their finances this morning? Who needs a breakthrough in their family this morning? The answer is to praise God. In the book of Revelation, chapter 5, and I just want to read from this for a, a moment. John, the apostle John has this vision. And he said, I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll but no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to break open the scroll or look inside John has this vision Of a scroll that's sealed. And no one is able to break open the seals. No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth is able to bring breakthrough to this situation. But then, look what happens. One of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion Of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. He has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll. And it's seven seals. When no one was able to break through. Praise was able to break through. When no one was able to open up the scroll. Praise was able to open up the scroll. And friends, in your life, when you need a breakthrough, praise always triumphs. Praise always overcomes. Praise always opens up. Praise always makes a way where there seems to be no way. The lion of the tribe of Judah, his name is Jesus. The lion of the tribe of praise. When you begin to praise God, something breaks open. Breakthrough comes on the other side of your praise. And then there's this fascinating moment where John turns around to see the lion. But the Bible says he didn't see a lion. He saw a lamb looking As if it had been slain. And the lamb speaks of the suffering. And the pain. That Jesus went through on the cross. But isn't it fascinating. That the lamb. Became the lion. And the lion got the breakthrough. And I just felt the Holy Spirit. Kind of give me this thought that. If I can learn. To turn my suffering into praise if I can learn to turn my hurt into praise you see they crucified Jesus they whipped Jesus they beat Jesus they killed Jesus 
But the lamb, the suffering servant, became the lion of praise. And the lion of praise got the breakthrough. And if you can learn to turn your suffering into praise, if you can learn to turn the hurt into praise, if you can learn to turn the wounds into praise, then there is an authority and a victory and a triumph and a more than conqueror and anointing that is released over your life. The answer to hurt and pain and emptiness is always praise. You remember the barren woman? What was the prescription for her barrenness? Sing. 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 Praise God. And then the breakthrough will come. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna close by, I want to tell you a, a quick testimony. Then I want to read you a scripture in the Bible. Uh, Matt, you, you guys can, can come up. Who's ready to praise God this morning? I, some of you have heard me tell this story before, but the very first time I went to Africa, it was with uh, Nathan Morris. And he was doing a gospel crusade um, in, in Kenya. And I had never been on a crusade or done any missions work or anything before. So I was kind of pretty new to it all. And I was just part of the ministry team. And Nathan was up there on the stage preaching away. And at the side of the stage, there was a tent. So I kind of, I saw this tent and I was looking at it for, you know, the first day. And then the second day, I went over and I said, um, what's that tent? And they said, just like it was the most natural thing in the world, they said, oh, that's the demon tent. So I was like, all right, okay, th thanks. And a little bit while later, I go back, I said, so what's the demon tent? And they said, oh, if anyone's got a demon, we put them in that tent. So I was like, all right, sounds fun. So I, I, I went into this tent. And right there on the floor, there was this little girl called Letty. Letty was about 11, 12 years of age. And her, she'd been sick, and her mother had taken her to the witch doctor. And it had obviously opened her up to all kinds of evil spirits. And there she was on the floor, possessed by a demon. She had supernatural strength. And a group of grown men were struggling to hold her to the floor. And there were this group of pastors there that were trying to cast a demon out of her. When I walk over, they all look at me. And I look at them and they're looking at me. And I realize they're expecting me to do something about it. I thought, you know, we, we didn't learn how to do this when we did pastoral training. You know, we, we learned how to run a committee meeting and how to do a funeral. And no one ever taught me how to do this, you know. Um, so I, I, I said the only thing I could think of to say, come out in the name of Jesus. It's a good line, right? Yeah. It didn't work. <laughs> Instead, the demon spoke to me through the little girl and said, there are nine of us and we're not going anywhere. So now I look back at these pastors and I'm like, I only had that one line and it didn't work. What do we do? So do you know what we did? And I'll never forget this. We start to praise God. We start to sing about the name of Jesus. We, began, we even forgot all about the little girl. We just started to declare the goodness and the power and the majesty of heaven. And after a few moments, the demon spoke again. And said, can you stop singing? I don't like it. And I learned a great lesson that day. That my praise irritates the devil. And that when my words can't get through, praise will get through. And one by one we saw those demons leave that little girl. And the next night she came in. Totally set free, saying, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Totally delivered by the power of God. Friends, that is the power of praise. What can praise do in your situations, in your circumstances? Why don't we stand together this morning? And I want to read to you. Out of the Passion Translation, Psalm 149. 
It says, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's time to sing to God a brand new song. So that all his holy people will hear how wonderful he is. May Israel be infused with joy because of him. May the sons of Zion pour out their joyful praises to their king. Break forth with dancing. Make music and sing God's praises with the rhythm of drums. For he enjoys his faithful lovers. He adorns the humble with his beauty. And he loves to give them the victory. His godly lovers triumph in the glory of God. And their joyful praises will rise even while others sleep. Listen to this. God's high and holy praises fill their mouths. For their shouted praises are their weapons of war. These warring weapons will bring vengeance on every opposing force and every resistant power. To bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shackles. Praise-filled warriors will enforce a judgment doom decreed against their enemies. This is the glorious honor he gives to all his godly lovers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says there that our praise is our warfare. That our praise binds and restricts the powers of darkness over our lives. Who's ready to do some warfare? Does anyone feel like they're in the midst of a battle at this moment in time? Does anyone need a breakthrough? Does anyone need the brightness of God to break forth? Then friends, it's time to praise Him. I, I want us to, to just do something right now. You see, I, I was reading just before I got up to speak that one of the Hebrew words for praise, yada, it means to raise up our hands in praise. But it also means this, to throw an arrow or to throw a stone. So there's this idea that when I raise up my hands in praise, I am throwing stones at Goliath. When I raise up my hands in praise, I am throwing arrows at the enemy. There's fire in my prayers. There's power in my prayers. There's victory in my prayers. So I'm done. It's over to these guys. But let's praise God this morning. Praise is a garment. It's something that we put on. It's an exchange. I take off the, the, the garment of sorrow. I put on the garment of praise. Maybe some of you this morning, you need to leave your seat and come out the front. You need to find a place where you can dance and sing and move and clap our hands. Come on, anyone going to join me out here this morning? Come on, don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Hey, thank you. Come on, Angie's up for it. Anyway, come on. Come on, come and join us this morning. Let's praise God. Let's give Him the praise. This is our warfare. This is where the victory is. This is where the power and the glory of heaven is released. Come on, someone's going to get their breakthrough this morning. Someone's going to get their victory this morning. Hallelujah. Wow, I hope that you were blessed by that this evening. Um, power of praise. Amen. I want to encourage you right now. Tonight, this week, this day, lift up your voices in praise to God. That you would know the lion of the tribe of Judah roaring on your behalf. Bringing that breakthrough. Bringing that power. Bringing that freedom that comes as we lift up our voices in praise. If you've been blessed by tonight's message, do leave us a comment in the comment section. Do share the video with your friends on social media. As we close this evening, I want to share with you a, a video right now, a testimony of a wonderful miracle that took place in Argentina when I was there a few years ago. I love it when the power of God touches children. And this is a beautiful young lady that, that received a miracle, a healing touch from the power of God. Uh, so be blessed as, as you watch this miracle and um, we will see you real soon. God bless. Thank you. What, what's, what's your name? ¿Cómo te llamas? Lucia. Lucia. Lucia, that is a beautiful name. Es un nombre hermoso, Lucia. How old are you, Lucia? ¿Cuántos años tenés? Ten years. Ten years old. Wow. wow. 
And you blessed us all with your dancing this week. Nos ha bendecido con todo lo que has hecho adelante en, en, en la danza. Nos ha bendecido. Real blessing. Una bendición para nosotros. Yeah. Tell us at the start of the, the conference there was something wrong with your ears. Contanos al comienzo de la conferencia qué pasaba con tus oídos. I cannot listen. I cannot hear. You cannot hear in, in one ear, both ears. No puedes oír en, en ambos oídos, un oído. In this ear, one well, right ear. You couldn't hear at all. No puedes escuchar nada. Wow, and how long has she been like that? Ya sé cuánto que estaba así. Since, uh, since she was eight years old. Since she was eight, wow, so for two years. Durante dos años, que no been able to hear in this ear. No podía oír en ese oído. Wow, so, so what happened? Did one of the team pray for you? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Alguien oró por vos, el equipo? Wow, Jenna, come here, Jenna. Wow, so, so Jenna prayed for you. Así que Jenna oró por vos. Wow, and, and what happened? ¿Y qué pasó? Her uh, ear opened. Wow, and now you can hear? Y ahora puedes escuchar, oír ese oído. Wow, praise God. Gloria a Dios. That's a wonderful miracle. Es un hermoso milagro. God loves you very, very much. Dios te ama mucho, Lucía. It's a great plan for your life. Tiene un gran plan para tu vida. Praise yeah. God. The same God that opens deaf ears. El mismo Dios que abre los oídos de los sordos. It's the same God who can fill you with His power. El mismo Dios que te